Welcome back to the Kobe Simmet audio experience. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about some use of videos and how to use video in social media and how to make your videos and live streaming more, uh, more interactive, more efficient and um, more engaging for your audience. Uh, right now, we're live on LinkedIn, we're live on YouTube. So if you want to go back and watch the video streams but uh today we're recording a podcast so uh i'm going to take you guys through in this podcast some of my thoughts around my journey with making videos uh what's been interesting what i've learned about it and uh, some of my small setup principles to make sure my videos are uh, as best as they can be as obviously the content is always the variable variable but we've got some really essential uh, elements if you are thinking about doing more video content apologize for the background noise our factory is in full flight right now uh, we've got the best practice business upstairs in the loft and we've got our uh, commercial activities that happen out in our factory uh, some big orders coming through uh, for uh, actually helping some of our big clients who uh, are struggling through this COVID crisis uh, so uh, the factory is really interesting. It's a business that's going very well. So I can't stop production today to uh, to tune out the background noise. Uh, we've got to keep going. So um, that's just my life here as the CEO at Best Practice uh, and some of the things that I've got to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, let's get into videos. So if you have got questions, Luke's just setting up my dashboard so I can see the comments. Uh, so those of you that are watching on LinkedIn Live and or on YouTube Live, uh, I find it fascinating and it really helps me to understand where you are watching from. So let me know where you are in the world. We always get uh, you know, a great bunch of people from all over the world and it's good for me to know uh, where everybody is. Uh, and also if you've got any questions, like if you've had specific challenges or problems with making videos or recording video, then, uh, then we can go ahead and we can, I can answer those questions for you. Okay, there's a couple of principles in terms of video uh, that we can talk about. Let's start with talking about cameras. Uh, we use uh, about four or five different types of cameras here at Best Practice, recording our videos. We've been doing videos now for about five years. We did some experimenting. You know, we've been experimenting for probably 10 years, but we've been doing videos on a daily basis here at Best Practice uh, for about five years. Uh, hey, Kizzy, uh, welcome from, uh, she's watching from uh, Miami Beach, so uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you guys are okay over there. I've, I've heard some, uh, you guys have been having some bad weather, so I hope everything's all right for you guys over in Miami. Uh, so yeah, if you guys have got any um, questions about videos and video production um, and, uh, and how to create that great content, please ask them as we go. Um, I don't actually, uh, I don't sell a video production. That's not a service. I just wanted to get on and talk to you guys. We've had questions about how you can do more video for your business. Uh, so I thought I'd share that. Um, you know, I just thought I'd share how we, uh, how we do it here at Best Practice. So let me start by talking about cameras because I can talk about the tech and then I can talk about some other parts. The best uh, camera, if you're watching live, that you guys can be using is... Um, we use iPhones here. We've, we're an Apple office. Our we're Apple Macs, Apple iMacs, MacBooks, um, all the computers running this live stream right now. We're running uh, three MacBooks to run this live stream for you. You don't need to do that. But I just want to point out that uh, an iPhone or a smartphone, uh, the latest Samsung or the latest Apple um, or, you know, even, you know, 12 month old device uh, is more than adequate to do just about all of the videos. And so a lot of the video streaming that I will do um, or, or I did used to do, uh, particularly during the small part of this crisis, was just with my iPhone. I had the YouTube app installed uh, on my iPhone and you can go live to a YouTube channel from the YouTube app using either the face camera or the back camera of an iPhone. So if you've got a friend that can help you, you can position the iPhone uh, so that you're using the good cameras that are the ones on the back uh, or the Samsung. Um, the camera on the face of your smartphone is generally not as good uh, in terms of quality. So at the moment, this particular iPhone, it's an iPhone, I think it's an iPhone 10 or 11. I'm not sure. It just gets given to me to use. What is it? It's an 11. So I've got an iPhone 11. It's got two cameras here. So the best videos that I can produce is with this good camera that's on the back. Um, a good little tripod. Actually, Zach, if you can pass me that tripod. I've got Zach and Luke helping me in the studio. It's just to your left there, Zach, on the table. I'll show you the tripod that I use. Thank you very much. So I've got a Joby. So for those of you listening to the podcast, I've got a Joby flexible, uh, um, excuse my arms, uh, little uh, 
tripod and it's got a Manfrotto phone holder on the top. So if you guys are watching online, I'll put that there in front of the camera so you can see the Joby base. I can sit that on a table in front of me. I've got a phone holder and so it can hold my phone in this, uh, in this little bracket. So for those of you guys that are, um, that are, that are watching um, online, you can sort of see how we're using that. Okay, it's a Joby Gorillapod uh, 3K kit and it's got a bendable tripod. Uh, Luke's just found it there. We'll post a link to uh, we'll post a link to that in the comments uh, on YouTube. So Vanessa can maybe just or maybe a screenshot. Uh, good morning, Stan uh, Malik Malaki. I hope I've said your um, I hope I've said your name properly. Um, I'll give you some tips for going live on TikTok as well. Uh, I'll do, I'll do that. I'll include that. So my camera tips and my video tips are applicable for any platform. Uh, we'll, we'll, we can quickly talk about that. Vanessa has been kind enough to post the link to the Joby product in the comments on YouTube. And I think, Vanessa, if you could do that for me. So Vanessa's watching from home. She's working from home, uh, helping out with our live stream this morning. So that's the uh, that's the tripod that I use. And the Manfrotto bracket is something I buy separately, and it just screws on top. So you can screw it onto that standard screw that's on the top of the tripod. So my point there is that you can put that on your desk. Uh, and I often do Zoom meetings where I'll be using my laptop on my MacBook, um, and then um, good morning, Cameron. Good to see you in the live stream. Uh, I will put that on my desk, and I will do video meetings as well. But you can definitely do a live stream. Now, YouTube prefers, and this is a video tip if you're writing down tips for doing videos. YouTube prefers that your uh, videos are shot in landscape, so you sit, you set your iPhone up or your smartphone up in landscape. Uh, Facebook Live, for example, you can do it in portrait. This little device that I've got, we can turn the phone around and we can shoot in portrait. So you can see what's going on uh, with your audience if you use the face camera. Uh, but if you've got someone helping, then they can set it up and they can control your phone for you, get a friend to do it, and they can press start and stop on the live stream. So the YouTube app is fantastic. So make sure you've got the, the YouTube app downloaded onto your smartphone uh, and then use that camera. Okay, just uh, on the topic of using any camera, it's very important to make sure that the camera lens is at eye level. So if you're sitting down, bring the camera lens down to eye level. Uh, if you're standing up, obviously on a tripod. So right now we're running two webcams. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't been able to find a good 4K webcam at this point in time. So right now we're running two Logitech HD 1080p uh, webcams uh, with USB cables into two laptops. And that's giving us the opportunity to record and stream live via a product called StreamYard. I'll go through all of these sorts of things and put them in the links to the description in the in the description, the links to these things in the description. I uh, will do that after the event. But I just wanted to give you some tips about actually the video itself. So yes, the camera and the text are always really important. I just wanted to show you that you don't need expensive equipment. Uh, you can use a really simple, cheap webcam. You can use the webcam on your laptop or you can use the camera on your phone. And for most of you, you've already got those. I would encourage you to do more practicing of videos with the devices you have before you rush out and buy equipment. And I, the biggest mistake that I made was going and buying, rushing out and buying equipment um, and buying expensive equipment. And then it wasn't the right stuff. It really didn't suit the videos that I wanted to make and what we were making over time. And that was a waste of money. So until you can get into a groove of like the actual process of, of recording the video and talking to a camera and making eye contact with your audience, then please don't go and buy extra equipment. So you wanna get your, your uh, iPhone or your smartphone camera. And in this instance, the camera's at the top of the screen. That needs to be eye level. So, and then when I'm talking, to, when I'm making my videos, uh, I'm making eye contact with you. So right now I'm making eye contact with you because I'm looking straight down the lens of the cameras that are in front of me. I'm not looking around, you know, I'm not looking out the window. I'm looking straight at you and making eye contact with you. And it's very important. Now there's an issue with, uh, I see it lots in video meetings that people set themselves up, they're nice and comfortable. They've got their, their laptops down on their desk and you're seeing their double chin uh, from underneath. And so I'll just give you an example. I've got my MacBook here that hopefully I'm in the camera shot that I'm not sitting, you know, I'm looking down at my camera instead of actually having my camera level. So when I actually do a meeting, a Zoom meeting or shoot a live video using my notebook, I actually have the camera, which is at the top of the screen at eye level. It needs to be horizontal at eye level, if, if I'm making sense. So not low, not high. It needs to be just at eye level. 
And if you can keep your camera lens at eye level, then you're, you're eliciting trust. So your audience is more likely to trust you and trust what you're saying, what you're educating on. So you wanna try and avoid having the camera low on the desk. Um, you wanna try and get that up to eye level. So that's tip number one. Tip number one is use equipment that you've already got. And tip number two is, is please ensure that your camera is at eye level. And there's a bunch of people that have been helping with videos and watching videos, you know, live streaming on LinkedIn or posting videos to LinkedIn, and they're posting from cameras that are too low, and it, it doesn't help your viewer, your viewer's experience. So ask yourself the question, how is my viewer going to have a great experience? And what, t tell me about some experiences that you've personally had watching videos that haven't been great, and what could the person have improved to improve the situation for you as, uh, as their viewer? Okay, so uh, so those of you, um, I see a couple of comments there on uh, LinkedIn. Let me just quickly, uh, I'll cover TikTok in a second for you. Uh, so yes, if you guys have got any questions, please ask uh, ask there on uh, on that platform. Okay, a um, couple more on, in terms of shooting videos. Lighting's really important, and it, whether it's a, a video meeting uh, that you're having, whether it's Google Hangouts or Zoom or FaceTime, lighting's really important. Now cameras uh, and the lenses and how the cameras work, they, they are absorbing light and they are recording that signal and projecting that picture you know, through a cable, through a computer, through the internet, over to somebody else. Lighting's really important. The strongest light source needs to be on your face. And uh, some of you might be able to share an experience where have you been in any uh, Zoom meetings or team meetings or Google Hangouts recently where uh, the person's face has been quite dark and it's been quite bright in the background. Now, for us right now, yes, we've got we've got studio lighting that we're using. Um, we're trying to actually find a place that we can use uh, here in the office um, to to do these videos for you. So we've got to overexpose because we've got a light source behind us. We've got a window behind us. So if you are shooting videos for LinkedIn or for TikTok or for YouTube from your smartphone or for your um, from your um, you know, any of your devices, I want you to think about, can you use the light source here in the window as an example, because I've got a window beside me, use that to your advantage. So ideally we are set up the wrong way around here. We should be using, I should have the cameras against the window and then my face is facing the window and then I'm using the natural light to light my face. So, so you will notice in some videos that you've seen from people either in meetings or in recorded videos, if the window is behind them, the natural light is going to be too bright for the camera and the camera is going to overexpose for the, for, the, for the light source behind. And so the face of the person, you as the presenter, is going to be dark. So you can actually be really clever with this simple hack of having your camera uh, up against the window. So uh, if there was a window here behind me, I would have the camera, the window is behind the camera. My face phone is up against the window. I'm using the natural light coming in from outside to, uh, to help light my face. So you don't need commercial lighting. Uh, now, if you do have a strong light source outside, like we do right now, we've got studio lighting. So Luke has set up for me some studio lighting uh, and that is uh, some pretty cheap lighting. I think it cost us about $50 a unit. It's just, a, it's got a little silky cover on it. Uh, we'll, post, uh, we'll post some pictures of that. Zach is taking some pictures now for my Instagram. We'll post some pictures of our setup on our Instagram story. So if you want to follow me at Kobe Simat on Instagram and Zach, if you can do that for me right now and take a couple of pictures of our little setup here, then you can jump on my Instagram and you can see what's going on in the background. And you will see from time to time, those things come up. Um, Luke has uh, given me a screenshot in terms of actually how to set up the light. We'll post that. Can you post that on my Instagram as well? Okay, so Luke's got you know the, the light from a couple of angles. So there's no shadow on your face. Uh, and also some lighting from down below. So if you want to start exploring getting some lights, uh, there's lots of cheap lights available. But again, if you've got a spare iPhone, uh, a lot of the iPhones uh, and some of the mobile phones have a torch. There's our little torch there. You can actually use that torch and you can see on the camera now how that actually lights my face and I can see the shadows. So we want to try and avoid having shadows on our face and that's going to help the situation now. But if I point that light at you, then my face is gonna go a little bit darker. So that's really important concept for you guys to understand that you can use natural light to your advantage, but it's also, it can create quite a significant disadvantage uh, in, in actually having the light source behind you. So if you've got a beautiful home office set up 
and the windows in the background and you're going to do videos pivot around just for the video and have the window behind the camera so that it lights up your face the other thing too it's important i've seen in lots of team meetings recently people have had you know notebooks on their desk and the camera is pointing up at their face and right behind their head is the light in the middle of the ceiling so we want to try and avoid that as well so try and avoid any specific light bulbs or light globes being behind your head in the shot because the camera can't tell what that is it just thinks it's a bright light source and it automatically adjusts the brightness of the image um, and it'll make your face darker so try and avoid like if you've got an external light source like outside beautiful day outside today here in sydney australia then we would basically turn the lights off and we would just use that natural light to light my face okay um so those just a couple of tips there um if you've got any questions um okay thank you um olivia uh, i see olivia's tagged kathy there i'm happy to help anybody if anyone wants some tips and tricks on um um uh any tips and tricks that you want on on shooting videos reach out to me i'm always happy to help we've done thousands and thousands and you can go and look at some of the old videos on our youtube channel and you can see how how uh, how bad they were okay uh some next questions in terms of you guys yes stan's made a great comment there on um on <laughs> on linkedin thank you stan i appreciate that yes vanessa organized uh some of our vip guests at our business summit the conference we ran earlier this year to get one of these cool devices. So a little bit different to this one that I use, but we organized for, for people to get those. Maybe Vanessa, you could find uh, an online link on eBay to that particular product so people can buy those uh, those tripods. So um, so you got the duck's guts there, a, a good one, Stan, um, in terms of uh, we wanted everyone to make some videos and start doing this kind of stuff. So, uh, so we gave everyone one of those tripods. So um, but that's the Joby one is the one that I use uh, pretty regularly. There's five or six of them. Whenever I see them in a shop, I grab another one. So they're everywhere. I can quickly grab it and quickly do a video. Okay. Um, so cameras, um, we've, we also run here at Best Practice. We've got Canon uh, EOS 90Ds. Uh, those 90Ds shoot in 4K. We run two of those cameras with high quality fast lenses. Uh, we also, um, the one thing I've just realized, Luke, is we're not running a microphone except for the podcast today, but we will run an external microphone one of the really important things about your videos and creating great videos is where is the microphone that is recording your voice? Now, right now we're running a really high quality microphone for our podcasts, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Sorry, it's YouTube, is it? And YouTube. So those of you guys uh, watching on YouTube, you're getting a really high quality microphone from this microphone right in front of me. Uh, the guys watching on LinkedIn, I think you're probably being getting the audio from the microphone on our Logitech webcam. So you, if you flipped between the two videos, you would notice uh, a, a difference in the audio quality. <clears throat> What's really important about a lot of notebook computers uh, is that the microphone will sit somewhere in the fold of the screen and actually won't be great. And I have noticed that if you can have uh, the micro, if you can have the camera up at your eye level and the notebook is, is more open than it is closed, so it's more open like this, you're gonna get better microphone reception. Now the ultimate right now in terms of a really cheap, uh, easily accessible microphone is Apple earbuds. So the, I use Apple earbuds, I plug them into my MacBook and I utilize the microphone that's on the white cable. I have to be very careful that it doesn't touch my shirt because the microphone can rub on my shirt and you would hear, you know, if you're listening on YouTube, that kind of noise, you wanna try and avoid that. So you wanna have the microphone not touching anything, but the audio quality is really important. Okay, next tip. Next tip is about how you actually post that video. Um, there is a really simple, cheap hack that you can do, which is go to a website or go to Google, type in speed test. Now, if you're planning on doing live streams, it's very important that you have a high upload speed. You'll be needing somewhere north of, you know, somewhere upwards of six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 megabits per second upload speed. So if you go and do a speed test, so you just can do a Google search speed test. There's a website, Ookla, which will probably come up or the Google speed test. Hit the speed test button and we'll check your internet connection. You can do it on a, on a data plan. So I often, if I'm just using uh, mobile data, not Wi-Fi, I will do a speed test. And sometimes here, we get a higher result on mobile data than we do on Wi-Fi data. 
Now that this obviously comes at a cost, um, so something to something to be mindful of. But you want to check your Wi-Fi speed, and you want to try if you're going to stream live, like we stream live on LinkedIn and we stream live on YouTube. It's very important to check your speed. Now, how this comes back to tips for shooting videos is that if you haven't good, got good upload speed, your video is going to freeze, and your audience is just going to see as a frozen choppy video. So what we want to basically do, my audience is laughing at me for the for the gestures I'm making. So in terms of thinking about your internet connection, it's very important. Now what we can do to get around that is we just record the video. So just use the video function, the video camera function of your smartphone or your notebook computer or your MacBook, and you can actually record a video, you can record it high res, and then you can upload that video and it can take a little bit more time. So it's a really important tip that um, I know streaming live is really good. Um, live television, live streaming is difficult. We always have problems here at best practice. We're getting better and better all of the time, but we've been running webinars like monthly web live webinars for four years. We do them, you know, at the moment we've been doing live streaming twice a week. Uh, we're getting better at it, but there will always be a technical issue. Now, if you have done all of your marketing work and all of your email work and all of that work to bring that audience to uh, all to their computers and their devices at a point in time. There's nothing more frustrating and absolutely gut-wrenching if your live stream doesn't work. So, you know, sending out the notifications, sending out the emails, sending out registrations, getting people to come to your event and you'll get 10, 20, 50, 100, 600, 1,000, 10,000 people coming to your live event online, that's excellent. But if the tech doesn't work because your internet connection is bad, then you know, you're going to frustrate everybody. So I would recommend in terms of starting to do videos that you record the videos. It gives you a chance to watch them. You might, you might be critical of yourself and you might do two or three recordings. Uh, I don't. Every video that we produce, we might edit with using Apple iMovie as, an, as a cheap free editing piece of software, uh, crop out the bits we don't like and then, uh, then we can obviously post those videos. But we try to just post everything and we just try to get better in the next video. So we don't worry too much about being perfect. It's about getting you guys great content and hopefully we can help you guys produce more great videos. Don't just think that these videos are relevant for social media. They're also great for training your team members. And I do lots of videos, a couple of videos a week that are just training videos. Only our team members see those videos. It's my way of communicating training messages to our team and using those on a day-to-day -day basis. So I don't need to stop the company to train everybody. I can just do a quick video and then I can send it out. And when they check their email, they can watch that video. So we keep those videos as, as unlisted on our YouTube channel. You guys can't see them. You can't search for them. You can't find them. Um, and they're there as uh, training videos for our team. So, okay. Let me just think through, have we covered um, enough in terms of how to create great videos? Think about lighting thinking about the camera, you've got that equipment with you right now to use, practice. Uh, think about your microphone and how your audio is being recorded. Think about your camera positioning. It's absolutely mandatory that the camera lens is level with your eyes so you can make eye contact with your audience. As the presenter, you've got to constantly look at the camera lens and that's what I'm doing right now. I've got two cameras in front of me. I've obviously got the microphone as well to pay attention to, but it's really important for me to keep looking down the camera lens for these kinds of presentations. Obviously, if you are recording an interview with two people, then the camera might be off to the side and I might be having a conversation with somebody over here and we're talking about, hey, you know what I can do to help you with shooting more videos, then that's gonna be the camera angle that you're gonna see. So that's something that is important to consider is the presentation directly to your audience or is your audience getting to watch a conversation like this? And that's gonna be different camera angles. If you've got the ability to edit, then if you are interviewing people, having two cameras, one on each person, and then having someone help you to edit, uh, there are some great editors available on Fiverr. Fiverr is a great resource that we use from time to time for freelance people to help with video editing. For a couple of bucks, you can get your video, you can record your videos, and then you can give them to someone on Fiverr. And for four or five or 10 or 15, sometimes $20, they can edit those videos. Um, then they can give you back the file and you can upload it to Facebook, to LinkedIn, to TikTok, to YouTube, et cetera. Okay, so there was a question about going live on TikTok. Uh, we don't do that very often, but all of the camera principles in terms of setup apply for any type of video. So 
you want to get yourself ready if it if you are going to go live that you know exactly when everything's going live so you can start talking because you've got four seconds to get onto it the system that we use here at best practice has a little bit of a lag so these longer live streams that we do weekly you might sometimes see that there's a couple of seconds luke and i might be having a discussion and you might hear that before i formally start my presentation so going live on TikTok or going live on linkedin or going live on youtube these elements all still apply. Be ready to start presenting as soon as it starts, as soon as your audience can see what's going on. I can see from my dashboard here, there's about you know, five or six or seven second delay to what I'm saying in my hand gestures. And so you need to pay attention to that. So if you are watching your dashboard, you might actually go, oh, there's a four second delay before you start presenting. So be ready to present uh, if, you, if you're gonna do those live streamings. But the camera is ready to go. And, and often you can record your video and you can even edit short videos on an iPhone really simply using just the, the camera editing software to just crop the front and the end of the video. When you reach out to turn on your iPhone to record the video, you can actually edit that out. So then you stop, give yourself a pause and then start presenting. In terms of the content to present, we can cover that in another video. It's really important when you're, the mindset that you're in when you're presenting is some people can get a little bit anxious and scared about who's out on the other side of the camera. When I'm presenting, I'm thinking about you specifically. I'm, I've done some research on the audience. I know who you are. I like to see the names here watching so I can talk to you. I'm specifically talking to you guys. I'm talking to Cameron. I'm talking to Stan. I'm talking to Vanessa. I'm talking to you guys that I've said hello to. Um, I'm talking to you, Kizzy. I'm talking to the people that are watching their live on YouTube. And so when I see your names, I know who I'm presenting to and I can customize my message accordingly. So when you're preparing to shoot a video, think of the first name and the last name of the person that you are talk, planning to talk to or who you want to see the video. And it's gonna be much easier for you to just have a really light conversation and present that video accordingly. So really simple stuff. Think about the person that you're talking to and actually have a conversation with them. And that's what I'm doing right now. Unfortunately, it's one-sided, and that's why I like the dashboard to give you guys some feedback. Okay, any questions from anybody? Um, hey, Bryn, welcome and uh, welcome aboard. Um, and uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to help you guys. So, uh, look, you know, Bryn uh, has just come on. He's watching live on on LinkedIn. And you know, as a plumber, um, if you could get one of the people on site with you, uh, you know, if you're a contractor. Um, you know, get, it says you're a gas plumber, gas, gas fitter, drainer there. Um, in terms of if you want to start doing some videos, that's excellent, is educating your customers. So you're not, it's not about other plumbers watching your videos and they might tease you and shit test you um, and, 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 you know, give you some, you know, some, some banter. But um, Bryn, for you and you doing videos is actually getting someone to hold the camera and if they can hold it steady. Um, and a good another tip for holding things steady is sometimes, I'm not sure, can you see the wall in the camera shot? I'll actually hold the phone against the wall. So actually to get a steady shot from somebody, I'll actually put the phone on the wall like that and I will talk and then the camera is steady. I do shake a little bit, like I'm quite an active person and, and I get the shakes and so to keep the camera steady, if I haven't got a tripod, I'll start recording the video and then I'll hold it against the wall like that and it doesn't move. And so Bryn, that's a good tip for you if you're on a building site uh, or, or you're doing some construction work and you wanna do a video showing a client you know, educating a client on things to look out for when you're doing work and helping build up your social media. Good idea to find, just have your smartphone, You've, you can do great videos, push it up against the wall like that, say what you need to say, present to the camera, and the camera's gonna be held still. Really good, simple trick uh, that works really well. So if you can be not touching the camera and not holding it, then your, your audience is gonna have a better experience. You can move around, but the camera doesn't, um, and that's excellent. So has anyone got any questions? I'm always here to ask questions. We try to make our Thursday live streams just quick. I uh, see there's a good group of people there on LinkedIn watching. I hope if, hit the like button if this has been helpful. Um, you know, maybe the uh, maybe the applause button down there on the bottom. You've got uh, like is blue, applause is green. Um, the the love heart button there is uh, is is pink. Um, so uh, yes, thank you very much. I appreciate that round of applause. So um, any questions from anybody? Light bulbs this morning from you guys on LinkedIn. I appreciate that. So I hope this has been a good Kobe Simmet audio experience on our podcast. If there's a specific topic that you'd like me to talk about on our podcast and you're enjoying the podcast, send me a, please send me a direct message on LinkedIn. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, we don't get as much feedback from the podcasts. So um, if you can, uh, if you send me a direct message, anytime you can come on our live stream on a Wednesday and a Thursday. 
please go ahead and uh, and comment there as well. But if there's a specific subject topic you'd like to know more about, uh, we're going to start talking more about what's happening uh, here in our businesses. Show you what's going on in the background. Um, you know, I lead a team of 50 people, and there's uh, there's more team there's more team members uh, across in the other business here as well. So we're going to start showing you a bit more of how we operate um, the business and how we lead people and do leadership and management. Um, Oh, that's excellent. Uh, Olivia's got a great question. How long should a video be? A video should be as long as it takes for you to make your point uh, and talk about the things you want to talk about. Uh, there's lots of, when you start doing videos, everybody's got a suggestion about how long a video should be, but ask them, have they ever shot videos? Get them to show you the videos that they've shot and ask them why the videos were the length they were. When I started shooting videos, everyone said, oh, your videos, you know, to get, get everyone's attention in four seconds and your videos should only be five minutes long. And I'm like, how many videos have you done? And they've like, none. So I've had some of the most engagement on our videos that are one hour long. We'll do a live webinar, 44,000 views, um, pretty dry topic. Um, but high levels of engagement and the YouTube channel shows that most of the viewers, 80% of the viewers watched for an hour. So if your content and what you're talking about is super valuable and super helpful for the people that are watching, they will stay watching. And if it takes you 30 minutes to make your point, then take 30 minutes for the video. What I will say about videos is that becomes a very big file and it's hard to move that file around, to email it, to edit it, to buffer it, to upload it. So, you know, good videos that make the point quickly uh, and, and I can talk about how to assemble the presentation uh, as well. I'll talk about that shortly. But a good video in four or five minutes to make a point, it's very hard to shoot videos under a minute and a half. We tried yesterday to make a TikTok video, making a cup of tea, and it ended up being a minute and a half. And so Luke's going to have to edit that down. Uh, to, to get that one out. So if you go and have a look at our TikTok account, Kobe Simmet on TikTok, you'll see that uh, making a cup of tea uh, video. So um, look on TikTok, it's a minute. Um, LinkedIn initially, uh, they were five minute videos. I think we can do longer videos now on LinkedIn. Certainly these live streams are unlimited uh, when I do them on LinkedIn, but it's about making your point. In terms of actually assembling your presentation, we don't always know who's going to watch. And so it's important to set up the framework at the beginning of the video. So for the first 20 seconds, you will often hear me say, um, you know, what do you do? Let me just have a quickly look at your profile. Um, so technical, so Olivia, you're a technical recruiter. Um, so uh, I might suggest Olivia that I appreciate you've done some really cool stuff there with your, um, your title uh, on your LinkedIn handle and it does stand out, um, but it's hard to read. So, but Olivia, uh, let me give you a suggestion. Um, if you are somebody who is looking to hire technical people in your organization, if you are somebody who is looking for a recruiter, that, recruiter that's going to take time to understand the very specific needs of your organization, if you are somebody who is a manager that's super busy, you're time poor, it's difficult to tap into a network of technical people, hey, my name's Olivia, I can help you in this video with how to go about specifying a job description so you can clearly brief a recruiter to get a great result when you're bringing people on board in your organization. I've got five years experience, I've got 10 years experience, um, I'm Olivia, I'm a technical recruiter, I'm going to work with you with my formula that I've unpacked over the last 10 years to help you go through the motions of actually building a winning formula for recruitment and bringing on onboarding and having great members join your team that are going to help your business to succeed. Now that might have just taken me a minute, but that would be the introduction for your video, Olivia. And what you can do is you can come back and you can listen to this recording because we've recorded this live on the podcast and also on YouTube and you can try and write all of that down. Um, but Olivia, that's that's the introduction. So what I'm trying to do is actually segment the audience. I'm saying, if you are a manager who is looking for a technical recruiter, if you are a manager who is looking to hire technical people, if you are a person who is time poor and has lots of technical people involved in the organization, hey, my name's Olivia. I specifically focus on helping people like you actually bring on great people to help the team. And so that's going to get the people that you're looking for as a customer's attention. Uh, for you, Bryn, um, uh, if you're a busy mom who's trying to actually keep the household running, um, you know that things sometimes go wrong. The toilet breaks, um, the, um, you know, the, the, the plumbing is broken, um, you're, you're thinking about doing a renovation, 
you're you're a busy mom and you've got a really busy husband or a really busy partner who leaves really early and comes home really late and you're not quite sure how to go about things. Um, hey, my name's Bryn. I'm a plumber and contractor. I'm really passionate about making sure that your plumbing and drainage is looked after in your home. I'm always available to have a conversation about the do's and don'ts and the things to maintain. So if you want to reach out to me, I'm always available to have a conversation. I understand as a contractor that you have a busy life and I understand how important it is for tradespeople to turn up on time because you can't just sit around waiting for a tradesperson. So we make it our point of difference that when we book 10 a.m. in the morning to come for an inspection, we will be five minutes early because I know you've taken the day off work to actually um, wait for me to come and inspect your kitchen or come and inspect your laundry. I appreciate that other contractors, um, they will get there when they can, but our point of difference is if we say we're gonna be there at 10 o'clock, we're there at five to 10. So Bryn, those are the kinds of things that you can stay at the start of your videos. In this video, we're gonna talk about some important do's and don'ts in the kitchen and how to manage your drainage so that you can prolong the life of your kitchen and your sink and how to look after your dishwasher, how to make sure that the, the water pipe from your under your sink to your water filter on your refrigerator uh, is in good condition and doesn't break and what to do if you have a leak. If you're a busy mum and you have, do have a plumbing leak in your house, I can come around and I can show you how to shut down the water supply to your house so you don't flood your beautiful home. So those are the kinds of things that we do as a professional contractor. So those are the kinds of ways that what, what you want to do is get the audience's attention. So for this particular video, if you are somebody who wants to learn more about how to do great videos, if you are somebody who wants to do more great videos for your organization, if you are somebody who wants to actually engage your audience and grow your profile and grow your brand, Hey, my name's Kobe Simmett. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the tips and tricks and successes that I've had shooting videos on YouTube. Over 1,000 public videos available on my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel has over 11,000 subscribers. I have close to 14,000 followers on LinkedIn. This is how I've built up that network. I'm gonna show you how I did it. And I've already taken you through the tips and tricks, but that's how I can introduce the video. So those are some of the tips on presenting. Um, you guys, um, I'll, I'll answer your question there, Olivia, about intro and outro. Um, I'll, I'll talk about those two parts, but that's the kind of stuff that you can do. So that would be the intro, intro being introduction. Outro, um, I'm not real sure about this, but uh, I have seen people talking about this. I haven't really done it myself, but people have said, okay, that's a wrap for the points that I was gonna make. In this particular video, we talked about cameras. In this particular video, we talked about microphones. In this particular video, we talked about the technology to use. We talked about some techniques for holding cameras. We talked about techniques for lighting. We talked about techniques for presenting. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe, hit the like button and come back for more of this great content. Now, now that I say that to you, Olivia, about the, that would be an outro for this particular video that I'm doing for you guys right now and podcast. Um, and actually that would make sense because this is a live stream and I know that people come onto the live stream after I've started and after the introduction. And, and if they stay to the end, then the outro tells them what we covered that they may have missed out on. So that would make sense to have an outro. Outro is you know the summary of what you covered in the video. The introduction is the summary of what you're gonna cover in the video. And then obviously your content is in, the, is in the middle. So really simple terms, intro and outro. Hey, I'm loving these questions. So if you guys have got more questions, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, Bryn, if you're still watching, I hope that was helpful. Let me just see if I've got all of Olivia's questions. How long should it be? What's too long, what's too short? Um, Olivia, I hadn't answered your question about what's too long and what's too short. Uh, again, that comes back to uh, too short is you didn't make your point and your audience hasn't got information they were looking for. So I asked myself a question, what information are people looking for that they don't currently have? And so I wanna make that point, I wanna make it quickly and you will see your visitor numbers dropping off in terms of if they're leaving your videos and they're not watching your videos, they're too long. So perfect practice makes perfect. Go and do 10 videos, load them to your YouTube channel, and you can do lots of Googling about how to load videos to YouTube and setting up a YouTube channel. There's heaps of that on the internet already. Um, we can do a little bit of that to help you, um, some of those videos, but there's lots that you can Google and find that out, out on YouTube. Um, but as an example, uh, on, on LinkedIn, LinkedIn needs to be quick. Think about the audience and when they check LinkedIn, are they sitting at a desktop or are they catching a bus? Um, you know, how are they actually viewing LinkedIn? Are they coming in off a notification? What are they doing in terms of, um, you know, consuming? Because LinkedIn needs to be short and snappy. Uh, if it's a live stream and it's a webinar kind of thing like this, they can be a little bit longer. 
But if they're, you know, if they're standing at, um, if they're standing at their kitchen bench just checking the LinkedIn news feed while they're making themselves a cup of coffee, then you've only got five minutes, and people might only stay on for what one or two minutes. And if they don't see it's valuable, they're going to go, and that's okay because you want to serve your valuable content to people that it's going to help. So I think the other thing too is people get really gutted when they don't get many views, but or, or when people leave their videos, it's like, okay, well, it wasn't valuable for that person. That's why you switched it off. If you don't like a TV show, you turn it off. If you like a TV show, you keep watching it. And so it's not about, you know, yes, you've got to make things for people that people like, but more importantly, you've got to make things that people like that are your buying audience. So it's always good, it's always a good idea to prep for videos to ask your audience, what do you guys want more of? That's why we're doing these videos for you guys, because people are asking a small portion of our audience is asking for this kind of content. We know lots about it. We can do it for you guys. So the long and the short videos is ask your audience. Just say, hey, I'm going to do some topics. Uh, what topics would you like me to cover? What kind of length would you like the videos to be? And try and fit within those constraints. Okay. Um, so Olivia, I hope this has helped you. Uh, I've answered your questions. Yes, great segment. Okay, perfect. Um, anybody else who's watching live on LinkedIn? Uh, looks like it might be all of our team. So I hope I've answered everybody's questions. I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Again, think about your buying audience. Go back and have a look. If you if you have been, you know, if you are running your own business or you are in business, go and have a look at who your customers are. Ask them the questions. What platform is their favorite platform? Um, where are you know where are they watching our content? What, how do they like to learn? How do they like to consume? And then you can go back and do that. We have been putting videos up on our website. We found that people want to see the videos on our website. They don't want to go to our YouTube channel. So we're putting our YouTube videos on our website. So you can go to bestpractice.biz and you can get some content from there. And then you can also get more information on our business where we do business coaching. We do psychometric testing and assessments for people. We have a small recruitment business over here in Sydney, Australia. We can help and maybe, maybe Olivia, we can help you too uh, with some recruitment because we have a recruitment team here as well. Um, definitely do some collaboration on that um, and, um, and anybody else there that we can help with our best practice assessment business. So all about different processes. There's the guides available on our website. Lots of great stuff. Okay, um, it is, I've gone a little bit over time for our Thursday live stream, that's okay. Uh, I don't see any other questions there on LinkedIn, so stand by. Uh, okay, no other questions on LinkedIn, no questions today on YouTube because I think the comments have been disabled. So if you haven't been able to comment on, you, actually we commented on our own thing, so I think we're good for YouTube today. Um, so uh, if you haven't taken the opportunity to have a listen, uh, we are recording podcasts. We do post a couple of podcasts when we get a chance each week on the Kobe Simat audio experience. It's available on all your favorite podcasting platforms. I hope you've enjoyed it. And to complement your podcasting experience, you can go and watch live some of these videos that we record. Uh, please take the opportunity to go and find me on LinkedIn. Uh, if you're not watching, I know we've got a big audience today on LinkedIn and I appreciate that, but at Kobe Simat is my handle on LinkedIn. There's Best Practice TV on YouTube. Uh, the team are really ramping up what we're doing on Instagram. So if you're not following us on Instagram, please do that. Go and find at Kobe Simmet and also bestpractice.biz on, uh, on Instagram. Stan Wall, you're always, always very welcome to, uh, to join us here in our audience. And I hope it's been helpful as we hope to see more and more videos from, uh, from your team there because we're coming into the warmer part of the year and you guys have got some great opportunity to get some of that outdoor footage that I'm excited to see. Uh, what the weather's doing and what's happening out in the surf when you guys get back on the beaches. Okay, uh, so if you don't see me out and about, you'll definitely see us right here next time, same time next week on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.